What's up everybody, my name is Chris Reed and today I'm going to show you guys how to make beats in Reason 12. Now for this video, we are assuming that you are a complete novice at making beats and you've just got Reason 12 for your first time. So we're just going to assume that you don't even have a MIDI keyboard, you don't know how to play music of any kind, and you just want to make some beats in Reason. So I'm going to give you guys some tips and tricks on how you can make your first beat in Reason 12. Let's get started. If you guys are looking for more advanced videos, then you can check out the rest of the videos on my page. I do have an intermediate tutorial on making beats with Reason 12, and you can check that out on my channel. All right, so let's get you guys making this beat. First of all, here is the Reason 12. When you first open it up, you got your browser window, you got your rack right here, your sequencer, and if you press F5, you can see the mixer. So first and foremost, we're gonna start with the rack. We're just gonna press F6. We're gonna press F3 so we can just see our rack. Our first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna load up some drums. So the first thing we do to load up some drums is go to the redrum drum computer. Now, this is a great instrument to use for your drums because you can load in some drums and you already have your sequencer in the redrum so you can easily create some drum patterns right here in the redrum to load up a sound we're just going to hit this envelope right here and it's going to pull up our browser window now now that we have our browser window open what we also can do is if we find a sound that we like we can simply drag that sound over and we can place it in any of these 10 slots but we want to try a different sound so we can hit this down arrow right here Cool, I like that sound. I'm gonna take down some of the length just to make it a little shorter. And then I'll boost up the level. So it's thumping right where I want it. All right, let's find some more sounds and then we'll lay out our first drum sound. Some nice clap. Let's use this uh, hi-hat here. So now we got a kick, clap, and a hi-hat. To start making our beat, we actually just need to press select on the drum sound that we want. And once we have it selected, we can start dropping it into this sequencer here. So you'll see that there's 16 steps on this sequencer. So the first step indicates the very first part of the sequence. Let's turn our click on so we can hear how fast this is going. Now let's add in a clap. We'll add in a clap by hitting select and then we can draw the clap in on step number five and step number 13, which are like basic places that you can place your clap for hip hop beats. Uh, let's drop our tempo down to about 85. Uh, let's add in some more kick drum. So now we can add in our hi-hat. To add the hi-hat, all we need to do is press select on the third bank where our hi-hat is, and we can simply draw in a pattern right here until we get the pattern that we want. So we can have all of them drawn in like this. All right, for a tip, you can go over here to the dynamic section and you can actually change these from hard, medium, and soft. So if we put soft and we alternate our notes like this, then we can create a little bounce. All right, cool. Now, if we want, we can make that very obvious to hear by turning up our velocity knob. This is the velocity knob right here. Or we can make it a lot more subtle if we turn the velocity down. Let's add in a few more drum sounds so we can feel this beat out. I'll add this snare in now by hitting select and hitting the 13th step. And that way it'll layer up that clap on the 13th step. Of course, we can also add in more rhythms if we want just to just to add some flavor. I want to change the sound of that snare I can actually adjust the pitch by going up or down and I can drop that length down some as well 
Let's go higher. All right, so uh, let's do this. All right, so now we got a pretty simple beat. Let's actually drop this into our sequencer and then we can add some variations. So to add this into our drum sequencer, we're gonna hit copy pattern to track. And we just need to also make sure that we put this on a different pattern or we can turn this off by hitting enable pattern section. But I just simply like to put it on a different pattern. And then if I want, I can start building out another pattern. From here, we need to press F7 and it will pull up our sequencer. We also can use these little circles right here to move in between the different parts of Reason. So we'll go to our sequencer by pressing F7 and we press play. All right, so now we can actually hear the beat. So right now the beat is just basically doing a loop. It's doing the same four bar loop over and over. But if we want, we can add in some variation by moving some of these drum MIDI notes around. So all of these notes represent MIDI notes. And the MIDI note means that this note is actually triggering the sample that's loaded into here. So it's just a visual representation of when that note is being triggered. So if we want, we can move this around so we can get it to trigger at a different time. Let's add a kick right here. We can add in notes simply by double clicking or holding down control and then dragging from left to right. You can also drag by control and move it all around this place. All right, so right there, we added in that extra kick. I don't necessarily like that though. I want it to come in a little bit faster. So one way that I could do that is by changing my snap up here at the top. I can change my snap from 16th to 132nd or to 164 or to any of the triplets that are available. So now that we've changed that, let's actually move it over. We'll move it over till it just barely touches the next note and we'll hear how that sounds. All right, let's add in one more. So we can actually copy over that variation. If we go over here, this is our full clip and it's on this note lane. We can use this arrow to drag this down and then we can actually duplicate this part of the drum sequence by holding control and pressing D or going to copy and simply pressing paste. Now, if you're copying and pasting, you need to make sure that the music has been stopped before you can actually copy or paste. Because if the music is playing while you try to copy, it won't copy and it won't paste either. So now that we have our drum pattern laid down, let's actually start to add in some sounds. I really like using arpeggios because they give a lot of movement and sound very easily and very quickly. So let's add in an arpeggio. To find an arpeggio in Reason Sound Bank, we need to pull up our browser. So to pull up our browser, we press F3 and then we can go to Reason Sounds and then we can go to Arpeggios. From here, we can just select an arpeggio. To create a clip in the sequencer, we need to use our pencil tool and draw in a clip. You can also switch between the different tools by pressing the letters Q, W, E, R, T, Y, U. Those keys will change your cursor to the corresponding tools. So take a moment to learn those shortcuts because you'll probably be using them more and more as you start making beats in Reason 12. So now that we've drawn in a clip, let's actually double click that clip so we can get into the piano roll. Now that we're here inside of the piano roll, we can actually start to play some of these notes. 
now arpeggios, if you hold down the note, it will play out a sequence. We can draw in that note, which is a C. We can draw that in by using our pencil tool again. So we can simply use the pencil tool. And if we click and hold, we can drag it out. Now let's play that to hear what that sounds like. So this instrument actually has a split between the arpeggio and bass notes. So we actually can add in a bass line into this arpeggio. Since we started on this key, which was a C, let's start our bass line on a C as well. If I use my pencil tool and I draw in a note, it will draw the note in there. And then I can actually quantize and make sure that it begins on the one. To quantize, you press Control K, or you can use this button down here where it says quantize. Now we have this one single note that's happening down there and it's not very long. To drag out this note or make it longer, we can actually grab a hold of this arrow and pull it out further. We can make it as long or as short as we want. Let's bring it to about here. And let's actually copy over that note and play it on a different key. So we can keep copying over these notes and placing them on different keys until we have a nice sound with good movement. So I think we have a really good foundation here and all we've really done is created a drum loop and a simple melody using an arpeggio as well as a bass line. Now let's add in some more instruments and then we'll go into sequencing out our beat. To add a new instrument, let's head back over to our rack. We'll press F6 to get to our rack. Now right here it says add device. We can click that and then it will give us options to add our device. Another way we can add our device is by pressing F3. When we press F3, we can go back to Reason Sounds and we can find another sound that we want to use. Let's say we want to use this pad and we use the first patch that's available. To add this pad into our rack, we simply need to click and drag and drop it when we see the plus sign. Make sure your plus sign is underneath the under instrument and not inside of the instrument because this will add it to our other instrument. An easy trick that we can do is simply by copying this entire clip down into our pad clip. We can do that, of course, again, by copying, pasting, and then we can drag it over. Or we can click, hold control, and drag it down. I don't necessarily like that pad, so let's select a new pad. In the browser window, we can see right here these arrows, and if we press down on our arrow, it will change the instrument for us. If those two arrows are not there, then you simply need to click on the instrument you want to change, hold control, and press B. Now the browser is looking for patches for that instrument. I kind of like that, but I don't like the top note. So let's get rid of that and let's just use these bottom notes. Now let's actually make these bass notes longer by highlighting all of the notes by clicking and dragging across. And then we can click on one of the arrows and drag it across. If we want this pad to play chords instead, we could draw those chords out on our piano roll. But Reason makes it actually really easy for you. They've included something called players. So if you right click on an instrument and go to players, you can add in a player to that instrument. A great player to use for this case would be scales and chords. So we'll add in scales and chords. We 
can customize this player in a couple different ways. Let's choose this octave up and let's add some more notes. So right now it's set to three notes. Let's turn it to four notes. Wow. So I'm really liking how that's sounding, but it's actually a little too loud. We can adjust the volume by using this knob right here. This volume is for our mixer. The actual instrument actually has a master volume as well, and we can adjust the volume with that knob also. Speaking of knobs, let's look at some of these other knobs. So for example, we have filter frequency, delay dry and wet, course and slow attack. Let's actually click this button to turn on the course and let's turn our filter frequency down to about 20. So now we pretty much need something in our beat that's like a lead. We need something that kind of add more variation to our sound. So we'll create something called a lead. So to create this lead, let's just have, let's actually go back to our reason sounds and we'll go to leads. Let's just choose a patch inside of this lead. Now, another way that I can play it, if I don't have a MIDI keyboard, I can actually press F4 and then I can pull up my on-screen piano keys. We'll make sure our pre-count is on by going down here to our metronome and pressing pre-count. Now, if we press record, Reason will start to record the MIDI notes that we play. I want to check out the performance that I just recorded. I simply need to double click on the clip that has been created. Now I can see the MIDI notes that I just recorded. If I just want to hear that instrument alone, then I can solo it by pressing this S right here. Let's turn on our metronome and make sure everything was in time. So I can hear right here that this note was not actually coming in on the one. So we'll drag this arrow over until it meets right there at the one on. And you will know that when you says this has a zero position. If I want to do that for all the notes, I can just use quantize. So I'll highlight all the notes either by clicking and dragging and highlight all the notes, or I can hold control and press a. Then I can come down here to quantize and it will quantize all the notes for me. So as you can see, quantize is not perfect and it's not going to keep your performance. If you added any slides or any variation in your playing, then it's not going to capture it the way that you want it to. So you actually need to go in and fix some of those notes. So we'll go in and we'll move the position of this note so that it matches where we wanted it to be. Then we'll drag this out so it'll be a little longer. I also want this note to be a little longer so it slides into the next note. Same thing for this one. We want these notes to really slide. I have an extra note there that I don't need. So I'll go ahead and highlight that note and press backspace to delete it. Now let's actually hear it with the rest of the beat. To get out of clip mode, I can hold control and press E, or I can go to this button right here that says toggle edit mode. And that will allow me to toggle back and forth between the piano roll and the sequencer.
Let's actually move this note down and hear what that sounds like. When we move that note down, these two notes are now colliding with each other and it's not allowing the second note to play. To fix that, we need to highlight this note and drag back some of that note so that it's not interrupting this other note. Let's add in some percussion so we can have a little movement in this beat. Let's pull up our browser window by pressing F3. And then you'll notice right here at the very top, you have drum supply and loop supply. If we go into loop supply, we can find a folder that says percussion. Let's double click it. Now we have a bunch of percussion that we can choose from to add into our beat. Let's say we want to add that loop into our song. We have a couple of ways of doing it. If we click and drag this Rex file into our sequencer, it will create an audio file. This will be the audio version of the Rex loop that we just selected. If we want to use the audio, then we can do that. Or we can press Control Z to undo that ad and we can create instead the instrument, which is known as the Dr. Octo Rex loop player. To create the instrument, we need to go down here where it says create device. So now that will create the Dr. Octorex device. If we go back to our rack by pressing F6, we can now see the device has been added in. When we play our sequencer, it will play that Rex loop automatically. A Rex file is audio that has been turned into slices, which are now being triggered in the same way our MIDI notes in our drum sequence have been triggered as well. It's a couple different things that you can do in the Dr. Octo Rex loop. If we just want the MIDI notes from this instrument, we can again click copy loop to track and we can just select a different loop so that it doesn't replay that same loop. Now let's actually do some sequencing. I can copy all of these clips by highlighting the clips, holding control, and then pressing D. That will duplicate all of the clips together. From here, we can actually delete some elements in order to create a sequence for our beat. Most beats start with some kind of an intro. So we'll take out the drums. Let's also take out that synth line that we created as well, and the percussion. And we'll leave just the pad and the arpeggio. By taking out that lead line, we've essentially created a verse. So now we have what's known as an intro section, a chorus section, and a verse section. After our verse, which is typically around 16 bars, we can go back into our course. So this is a good indicator to show us where our course is because this melody line only appears during our course section. So we know we have an intro, course, verse, and a course. If we want, we can highlight just this section of clips, control D, and now we have a second verse and a second course. For traditional hip hop music, we typically will double the last remaining hook or course. And now we have two verses and four courses with an intro. And if we want, we can actually create an outro as well. Let's create an outro by copying over only the pad sound and we'll leave it just like that. This L represents the left part of the loop section. We can drag this to a specific part of our song. We can also drag the R to another part of our song. And as long as the loop indicator is on, it will only loop that portion of the song. So now essentially we have our entire beat. We can use this bar at the bottom to zoom out. 
if we drag it to the right it will zoom out of our sequencer and if we drag it in it will zoom in dragging it all the way out we can now see at the very end there is a e and this e represents the very end of your song so there's a loop section and then there's the entire song sequence section so the entire song sequence section is represented by this e now that's one very important thing that we haven't done for any of this beat and that's save so we need to hit control s or we can go to file and press save and now we need to save this beat all right so we've made a beat and we actually have sequenced that beat out so where we have some different parts an intro course verse and an ending now let's actually give this beat a little bit of mix and some leveling so that our beat sounds a little bit better to pull up our mixer we need to press f5 and now we can see all of the instruments that we have created i like to rename my mixer channels so i'll double click right here where the name is and then i can rename them so now we know where pretty much everything is now let's move to a portion of the beat where most of the elements are included if I highlight this section of clips and then press P, Reason will create a loop sequence of that section and begin to play the music. So now let's go back over to our mixer and check some things out. So these knobs represent our levels of our beats. You can look at the meters to see where the meters are hitting to see how loud those sounds are in the beat. Let's solo our drums, for example. As I pull it down, the music gets softer. And as I raise it up, the music gets louder. To reset the fader to its natural position at zero dB or unity gain, hold control and then click on the fader and that will reset it to its original position. We want our drums to be pretty loud so we want to leave these drums at that level. Let's actually pull our percussion down some. We can pull it down very quickly by clicking and dragging and moving up and down but if we want precise movements we can actually hold shift on our keyboard and then when we pull it down it will move very slowly so let's move it down just a little bit like that now i'm noticing that in this percussion there are some bass elements and i don't necessarily want that in our percussion so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use our mixer in order to bring out some of those low frequencies by using a high pass filter so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to click on the channel that i want and press f2 when i press f2 i'm greeted with reason spectrum eq As you can see in this area, there's some bass activity and it sounds pretty good, but we just don't need it for our beat. So we're gonna cut some of that out using a high pass filter. To turn on our filter, we just need to press this button that says HPF or high pass filter and our filter will be activated. As we drag it across, it will cut out some of that bass sound. And as you notice, it raises the other side of the frequency as well. So keep that in mind. For this ARP section, I want to add in a compression because it has a lot of elements and it moves around up and down and some of it is louder than other parts. So we're going to use a compressor so we can even out the sound. We'll go up here to the top of our section where the compressor lives. And one way that we can do that is by coming over to this right section and dragging up. As we drag it up, we can see this dynamics tab. And here is our compression section we can notice it by saying COMP, that's compression. To turn on our compressor, we need to hit this on button. The higher your ratio, the more your sound will be decreased by the compressor. The threshold indicates what decibel level we want the compressor to activate and start to lower the sound. With the ratio turned all the way up and the threshold all the way down, we're doing what's known as squashing this sound. It's a very noticeable change to the sound. So we actually don't want 
anywhere near that much ratio nor that much threshold we just want something so that the compressor actually activates and lowers some of that sound for us we can also add in that high pass filter for our synth line since it's also not producing much bass and as well as our pad since we don't need too much of that pad let's also add in a low pass filter and cut out some of the highs on the pad as well how you mix your beat really is all about style and flavor. So different people have different styles and different flavors when it comes to mixing their beats. These are just a few tips that you can use when you're actually implementing your own mix and master into your beat making process. It's totally up to you how loud or soft something is, how you pan and what kind of instruments or effects you use with your music. Assuming that we are done creating the beat, now we just need to bounce the beat so that we can have a MP3 or WAV file that we can use to be able to play the music outside of the Reason Studio software. In order to export this song, we want to make sure that our end indicator is right where we want it to be first. And we need to go up to File, Export Song as Audio File. Now, if you only want a certain part of your song, you can export loop as audio file as well. And wherever your loop indicators are, Reason will only bounce that section of your song. Let's export song because we want the entire song from the beginning of the song to the end indicator to be exported. Once you choose your folder and where you want the file to be exported to, you can also change your save as type, either a WAV, IFF, or MP3. Let's choose an MP3 and we'll hit save. From here, Reason will begin to export your song and you can find that file in the folder that you designated for Reason to save your file in. All right, guys, so that is making your first beat in Reason. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and you got something out of it. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a thumbs up on this video. Subscribe to our channel so that way you can see more tutorials in the future. And if you are looking for more advanced tutorials, then you should check out this playlist right here.